Well, hello and welcome back to Clickbait. And it's day two in isolation for the whole country and already we're all bored, aren't we? We've done enough box sets and we've done enough one walk a day to the park to be ready to go back to work, to be honest. But that doesn't mean you have to give up on your photography or even not start it as a hobby now because because just because you're indoors, it doesn't mean there's not lots to take photos of. And now I know not everyone is going to have something like this to go and play with, but everyone, I guarantee, will have something like this to play with. And this camera is incredibly good and there's lots you can find around the house. Can I find enough things lying around the house that I can take a picture of that will make an interesting, maybe an abstract or different picture that's good enough, maybe even to stick on Facebook or Instagram, just lying around the house in the next few minutes? Now your phone camera is an enormously powerful tool with lots of capabilities which you might not realise it has. For example, you can choose where it focuses. Normally it'll try and work out what you're looking at, but if you just tap anywhere on the screen, you get a little box up and that is telling it where to focus. So if you're trying to set up a group of things and you want to focus on the middle one, the left one, the right one, you choose that and that's where it focuses. Secondly, you can control the exposure as well in the standard camera. If you, once you've chosen the focus point, just drag your finger up and down on a little bar that arrives next to it and that makes it lighter going up, darker going down. Could not be simpler, which is very handy indeed. Thirdly, you don't only have to use a button on the screen, you can use the volume controls, set it off as well. So if you're balancing the camera in a precarious position, you don't need to try and move your thumb around to try and get the button, you can just squeeze the side. Or even easier, if you happen to have your headphones with you, which most people do. Uh -huh. I have lost several pairs of lightning headphones and now I've just bought an adapter for the old iPhone headphones. The volume button on the headphones also works as a trigger. So if you've balanced this somewhere and want to do a self-portrait or not disturb it because it's quite dark and you want to get a long exposure without any vibration in, you can do that as well using this. Right, let's get going. Now, if you're looking for other jobs to do around the house as well as taking photos, maybe defrosting the freezer will be one of them. I did, and I got this, which is an interesting chunk of iceberg. Now, to make this a bit more exciting than just a chunk of ice on a white background, this is from my everyday carry little pouch I have in my camera bag. I'll do an everyday carry pouch video another time, but that's quite an interesting little other subject. Now, this little LED torch gives quite a nice little bright shaft of light, and looking through there, suddenly you see all the texture and shape of the ice and it changes it completely. I can light that and shoot through the ice and that'll make a really interesting abstract picture. Right, let's crack on with that. So I've held the um, torch down in place with a lump of blue tack and now if you tap the screen you can control the aperture and so the amount of light going into the camera on the phone. So instead of having a bright glare you can control that light and you can actually see the texture and that's really pretty. If we're getting close you can see all the lines the details, it's an amazing image, which we can then edit in Photoshop or in the camera's thing. And because it's so bright from the light, everything else behind it is just turned to pure black, so it looks like it's in a studio background. This is really interesting to look through. It looks like I'm in the Arctic or on like a mountain top somewhere. You can really see all the structure of the ice through this. This is incredible. It's actually even better than I expected it would be. Don't forget, it's digital, take lots. No one's charging you per shot. If we just flare the light off the side of that as well. Get a really cool little image there. Brilliant, I'm happy with that. So this may well be the most valuable item in the house right now, but have you ever actually looked at how these things are made and the end of them? That's actually quite an interesting spiral, a really kind of tight packed circle. And if you go and get our little friend the tiny light again, we can shine it across the side. Don't forget, the best photography is all about controlling light, seeing where the light comes from, where it goes to, what it hits along the way and what shadows it makes and what highlights it creates. So by just moving this around it, let's find a nice pattern on there. I've got a nice little kind of cut line from the machine in the factory. We can maybe do something with that and get a bit of kind of like a mad landscape going on if we get close in with the phone again. Let's find a nice place fairly close up. And don't forget with with these iPhones and the uh, Androids as well, if you tap on the screen, that tells the camera where to focus. Let's get nice and close into it. And you can have it focusing on that point there, near the camera. Bring the torch in and get a nice angle. It's pushing the light from the side. Then you can really see the texture 
And if you didn't know this is a loo roll, you really wouldn't know what you're looking at. And once we've cropped in on this, it's going to look like, I don't know, it's snow on the top of a mountain. If you point it into the camera a little bit, you get a bit of lens flare in there as well. If you crop it tight, maybe it'll look like you've been skiing perhaps. I wasn't in isolation, I was in the Alps. And you can honestly play with this all day long, or until the battery goes flat on your torch anyway. And it's just a mad, mad abstract. And look at those long shadows, it's like midday, one o'clock, into the evening. And don't forget to angle the phone as well, so don't just shoot it straight on. Try twisting it around the side. If I turn that around actually, that looks kind of like I don't know, a racetrack or something with a corner. And you could post these on Instagram tonight and then just put the question, what have I photographed? Make it a game for your friends. Now you know all that Lego your kids have badgered you to spend hundreds of pounds on and then gathered hundreds of pounds of dust on top of because I've built it and ignored it for the last two years. Now maybe you can get out and do some diorama making with it. Because if you get down to the Lego zone level, you can suddenly turn this towel on a sofa into like a, some mad jungle scape. I couldn't find a green towel, so I'm gonna use a blue towel with a cushion underneath it and then turn it to black and white and then that'll kind of give the impression of it's not a blue towel on a red sofa. So far I found the volcano, the uh, jungle exploring truck and a guy in a hat. I think we've got some other jungle stuff around. I'll have a quick look and then come back in a moment. Now depending on what you can find, you can do a bit more set dressing with a bit more jungly stuff to kind of hang around gyrosphere. This can be the end of Jurassic World, a few leafy things. Depends what really what you can find in the toy box really. So now we can make sure we get nice and low and in the face of the Lego guy. So we're basically taking a portrait of him and the perspective on this world completely changes. So we'll bring the camera into roughly the right place. We'll scroll through our options of colors. So this can become like a icy snow scene. Bit too blue there. Let's find a black and white one. There we go. Nice black and white, there we go. It's hard to tell where we are. And again, we touch the screen where we want the focus to be. Bring the camera down so you can see the Lego guy's face. And we've got this massive perspective going on. Because we're so close, it really gives it a shallow depth of field and pushes everything else out of focus behind him. Let's keep him in focus. And we've got the truck looking like it's coming over the um, off-road situation. So now it looks like we've got the truck crashing through the off-road, just about to see the dinosaur in the background and the volcano behind. That's quite a cool shot here actually. I like this. There we go. Let's move in a little tighter on him. Turn him around a bit, we can model him. Work it baby, come on work it. Would fall over baby, fall over. And you can see the dust on this guy. You can see how much it's been played with since he was bought. If you can find a green towel that looks like grass, then fantastic. I'll do this in color. Maybe I'll sort of colorize it elsewhere. It's a mad alien landscape. If you've got space Lego, you can do this on a gray towel or dock a red towel for Mars. Now this kind of diorama is only limited by what you can find in terms of what Lego you've got and your imagination. I've got some road bits and I've got some cars. So if I had more time, I could put some buildings up and make like a race scene or a road scene. I can't go to a car meeting right now because no one can, so I can make my own one here in the house. And because by getting really close, it puts everything behind it out of focus. You could use a bit of creative trickery, find some cardboard boxes or something that looks a bit like buildings, draw a picture of a multi-story car park or something. And this is just stuff I've grabbed off my desk, apart from the Lego that was in the rummage box. And you can have yourself a car show in the comfort of your own home. Okay, maybe not that car. It's hungry work, this thinking up ideas. It's so time for a well-earned chocolatey break of a generic, oh hello, plate please. Well this is kind of fun isn't it, look at this caramel splitting in the middle, I reckon we can get a cool shot with that. It's getting tight, let's try and smoosh the caramel about a bit, try and get a bit of a stretch on that caramel. There we go, we've got ourselves a nice little advertising photo there. We can throw in the torch again for a bit more light happening. And don't forget, you can use the volume button on the side of the phone if it's easier to get a finger onto that. Let's 
try and make this look a bit appetising and nice. I'm not sure how well this is working, to be honest. Try moving the light around, see what different angles of light from the torch does to the shape and the texture of your chocolate bar and your lovely caramel. I'm going to go from about there. I'm going to try and roll this thing over on its side. Smooch that caramel out for a bit of a stretch. Put those chocolate chunks in the middle. I don't know if you can see this on the screen of the phone. But we're getting a nice glow to that caramel. And get really tight with the lens. Get really close. And just keep experimenting until you get the right look. I'll be honest, that one didn't work out quite as well as I'd hoped. But it was a good excuse to open a chocolate bar. Um, oh, that's some better shot there. Find a friend or someone else in the house, get them to bite it, and then get their teeth and the caramel. That'd be a great shot. Mm. But then they get to eat the chocolate and you don't. So think carefully before you commit to that. Okay, for this one, we've stepped away from the sofa and we're in the bathroom. Because in here we've got a tap. This is the only picture I'm going to suggest to you which takes any kind of specialist equipment, and that specialist equipment is a plastic bag. I will take no responsibility, this is my disclaimer. Check your bag is waterproof before you put your phone in it. If you get your phone wet, I'm taking no responsibility because I just told you, check it's waterproof. So you're on your own with this one. It also might make it easier to use the remote release with your headphones as well. Now that's what we can do with some running water. This is actually a waterproof bag that Amazon sell, so you can put your phone or iPad in a bag and use it, and so it still works, even though it's inside the bag. So what we're gonna do is put this underneath running water. and get a running water shot. I've left the lights on in the mirror for a bit of sparkle. I've got a tube of toothpaste and a toothbrush up there for a bit of interest and color. And now we're gonna see how this works. I'm actually getting wet. Try it with it off to the side of the water. Try it in the water. Try the water down a little bit because it's a bit splashy. That's quite a weird shot. You probably want to make sure your tap is clean before you show the world this. I'm hoping mine is. Now also remember to stand well back otherwise you'll find yourself in the picture because these are really wide angle lenses on the phone. Try angling it so it's not looking straight through the water because the water will make it very out of focus. So if the water is running away from the lens a little bit, you might get a clearer picture. Now a lot of these are heavy on the abstract. Well, I actually quite like this as abstract art in its own right. And if you look at this timeline here, you can see I took a lot to get a couple of good ones. That one's really cool. I like that one. That's an arc of water. That's very, I don't know, Matisse-esque. That one's not bad. That one I really like. You've got the mirror in the background, you've got this nice little column of water. That's a really bizarre photo. I really like that. The tip here is tip the bag on the phone just slightly away so that the water is running away from the lens and you get a much clearer image. Cool. Let's see what else we can go and do. One last one to be going on with and I'll let you go and crack on with your own ideas. We call this one top-down photography because you shoot it from the top and you're looking down. What you need is some items that are in some way related. Anyone who watches my Furious Driving channel will not be very surprised to learn I brought a Rover P6 into this. I've shoehorned it into the video somehow in the end. The idea is you bring up a couple of items together are in some way connected and then you put them in a nice arrangement to create a, a visually interesting thing that kind of means something when they're together. So I've got a bonnet badge from an old Rover P6, I've got a set of keys from a Rover P6 and I've got the model of a P6. These are all different items that are in some way related, but almost the most important thing, because it doesn't matter what you're taking pictures of, if you're into gardening or something in your house is, then now's a great time because it's spring, the buds are just coming out, the flowers are rising. You can go and cut a couple of flowers, a couple of buds, go and get um, some small garden tools like a trowel or a small fork and a plant pot, and uh, you do it with that. If someone in the house is into cooking, go and get some cooking utensils and some ingredients and lay them out. I'm going to use this old wooden chopping block, which is a solid lump of oak. This is actually an offcut from our kitchen worktops when they were installed about 15 years ago. It was oiled up at the time and it's now had um, pans put on there that were hot, all kinds of other burn marks and scratches and it's given it loads of character. If you've not got something like this it doesn't matter. If you've got a metal tray that you eat your dinner off, turn it over, it's kind of a shiny metal back, that'll be interesting. 
If you've got some kitchen tiles that you were meant to have been putting on the wall this week while you're off, you can lay them together, makes it into an interesting background. If you've got a sheet of cardboard even, that would do, because it's got some texture in it. Anything that just looks a bit different and a bit more exciting than just a plain tabletop or a plain sheet of white paper, just gives it some real visual interest and a bit of punch. And all you have to do now is put it down somewhere flat and put some things on it. And the trick is to try and arrange them in a way that looks interesting so they are interacting with each other and telling a story. Also don't think you have to have all the items all the way in the frame. You can lay them out so they're all just sticking out a little bit. If I were to shoot this right now, now I've got the bonnet of the car, I've got the keys just arranged in a little fan pattern. I move the car a little bit but I'm not happy that I can't see the word Rover on the badge so I'm going to move the Rover badge around a little bit. There we go. Move those keys back a tad so the ring the ring doesn't need to be in the photo. The keys need to be in the photo, but the ring doesn't. Even the boot's not quite in the shot in this one. But I quite like that. And this is the ultimate of shooting stuff in the house. I'm sitting on a sofa with the stuff on my lap. It doesn't get more compact than this. It doesn't matter if you live in a one-room bedsit or you live in a ten-bedroom mansion. You can do this shot with anything you've got around you and it's only your imagination and your ability to just move it around that's limiting you. Let's do this in a different manner, because I like the rover looking square across. Now this badge is slightly awkward to use because it's got the old screws that held it to the bonnet. It does tip a bit, which makes it great for displaying on a shelf, but slightly awkward for taking a photo of. Don't be afraid to move things around and change them up. I'm going to move these keys. I like having three keys on the ring because it gives it a bit of... Um, but a balance. Uh, two looks a bit awkward, one just looks lonely, but three looks like quite a nice little number. If you look at a car magazine, three cars all together look quite nice, but I did have them either side of the big key and that looked kind of wrong. And I want to see the big key on top because that's the ignition key, the one that makes the car go. So I can now twist these around. There we go. At the moment, I'm shooting along the grain of the wood as well. I'll, I'll mix that up again in a second as well. And as I always say, it's digital, keep shooting. You're not paying per frame. The only limit is the memory card. And if you don't like a shot, just delete it. And go back and do it again. Let's move the rover back a bit. So what that is actually a really cool Insta post. I haven't even changed the settings and worked it through. It's just purely as it was out the camera. I like that. It's really simple, really basic, but you can move it around. You can put it, twist them around, get them closer, get them to interact, lay things on top of each other. There's all sorts of things you can be doing with this right now. I'm just using window light. The light lighting this picture right now is just the window that's behind the camera. I've got no artificial lights on in this room at all. Oh, that's cool as well try things on different ways up so that I don't want to break the wing mirror. That looks quite cool. Let's get it closer in. I don't want to break the wing mirror because this is quite a rare model. I don't know if this is making great TV but I'm really enjoying myself. And you know what? That's kind of the point isn't it? We're all at home for the next three weeks. We've got to fill time and we've got to make, make the best of it. And if you can have fun, do something creative, then brilliant. You've used your time wisely. Doesn't matter if you're painting a wall or creating some, some little Instagram art. You're having a good time, that's all that really matters. Of course, I know I've said this is a top down, but what you could do is twist it all around so you've got something large at the back. You're not limited, you don't absolutely have to do it as a top down. Once you've got this set up, you can move the camera around. This is the one golden rule of photography that I would give you. Experiment and don't be limited. Okay, that's two golden rules, but it's one, one thing really. Just because you set out to do one thing, there's no reason in the world why you shouldn't go and do something else as well. You've got the camera in your hand, the subject waiting to be photographed, and currently we've got all the time in the world. So this is meant to be a top down, but hey, I quite like it looking across the car at the badge. It's a different shot again. Well, this has been fun. I hope I've given you some ideas of ways to spend your day just experimenting with the phone because you've got this in your hand anyway you may as well get off Facebook 
get onto the camera mode, find something fun around the house. What can you see? What is an interesting abstract? Can you go and lay out your kitchen utensils on the hob and create some mad space scene? Can you find your bath sponge and a bar of soap and turn it into a beautiful work of art? Can you go and find a bunch of toy cars on the shelf and then turn it into some mad street scene using forced perspective, which is another video we'll come to at a later date. It keeps your mind active, it keeps you safe from the virus, and it makes you feel better. I hope you've enjoyed this. If you have, please hit like and subscribe and share it with your friends and maybe give them a project. Maybe sort of share it with two or three people. Have a competition between yourselves. See who can come up with the maddest, most different, most interesting set of pictures from just stuff you found around your house. And I'll see you again next time. Take care.